So today's uh, subject is all very much around understanding skills taxonomy. Who actually understood what skills taxonomy even was before this? I didn't. Not a lot for me, unfortunately. No. I've never, I've never heard it called that, I must admit. Mm. It's a very posh name. It's mm. a very posh name. Do you, does anyone know what it kind of means or what the kind of phrase is? I Googled it, so I know. Yeah, I, yeah I've Googled it as well to do some kind of background research. Go on, uh, go for it, Robbie. Effectively, it's grouping job titles into their actual skill sets yeah. and the deeper so going it break that down into job titles break the job titles down into the actual skills that you need yeah in that function which kind of makes sense yeah isn't it it's just like what you would put in a job spec but now they're going to go and well, well if you were hiring like an it developer or a scientist or a finance person what are like the actual skills you need for those specific jobs mm -hmm. but now they're just making it in more of a visual way right yeah, that's kind of what I was seeing because I did some research on it thinking like how would this even benefit why is this even important but I suppose if you're thinking about it from an organisational perspective you can almost look at the whole thing in terms of operations finance IT science or whatever it is and go right well, what skills do I need in each category Yeah, and then just hire into it that way yeah and I think part of it kind of plays into okay well we, we have a project that we need to complete Yeah, what are the skill sets we need for that project Yeah, rather than saying well I know I need a developer, a BA, a finance manager. What do I? Well, what skill sets do I actually need? And then, in a much larger organisation, going on. Okay, who's best suited to this project based on their skills assessment as well? It's kind of what I got from it. So, as well. so maybe it's almost like thinking you're looking at the skills before the person. Yeah. Must be right. I think that's yeah. kind of my interpretation of it. Is if you're looking to build out something, you don't look at it and go, oh, "I need." But you do, don't you? I think notoriously, you kind of go, "Right, I need five BAs, two IT guys." Da 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 whatever but in this way it's thinking more like okay well i need to build out a lab or i need to build an app so i need these skills what skills do i need for that what skills yeah. do i need for that and mm. then hire and then think about it almost the other way around yeah because if you if you hire five bas or you've got five bas in the business but four of them have all got one skill set and one's got a slightly different skill set it's i think it goes deeper than okay a, a ba but you at one ba could have certain strengths that another might not that might lean itself better towards one project or another. Yeah. Have we seen anyone like hire like this? Or is it not? I haven't really seen it. I've seen people recruit for it in this way. Yeah. And say, well, okay, what skills do we need in the business? And how do we kind of then use that in the right way? But in terms of actually managing it on a day to day and kind of using it, you've, you know, you have like psychometric testing and what, like, there's one where it's like, okay, you're a, you're a red person which means you're more creative Ooh. and a blue might be your more like this profile kind of yeah stuff, that, yeah kind of like, more like the psychometric testing side of things but they tend to be more personality based mm, so yes. but in terms of actual skills overall in terms of like hard skills as well as people skills not really or at least i haven't there's more of a focus on just previous job descriptions or job titles held in previous industry experience over just specific skills based hiring isn't there yeah um and that's certainly the case with a lot of our clients in the finance industry. I mm. don't think I've ever seen it where a, a, a client will look specifically, will, will ask specifically just for a certain skill set or a group of skill set, skills. Yeah, group of yeah, skills. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not something I've seen before. We're the same, aren't we? I think we always yeah. always followed with, I need this, this and this, but you need 10 years working in industry. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And if yeah. you've got eight, don't apply. And it's really frustrating. Because you'll find that after six months of not hiring, you'll end up seeing someone with five get a job anyway. So mm. we definitely see it. I think everyone subconsciously does it anyway because they mm. just list loads of stuff on the job spec, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you took job titles away and said, this is just my skill set, it would alleviate a lot of that. But people get so caught up of saying, I'm hiring for a senior scientist, so I need to find a senior scientist. Yeah. But then really, if you break it down, it could be like a, maybe not for like a, a scientist, but if you're looking for like a, an EA, for example, <clears throat> By skill set, there's a lot of different roles that an EA could then go on to do, and someone that's come not an EA could then do, or could have come from. Here's a great example, actually. Yeah, how many EAs do you have? Have well, you do twenty? Yeah. Like but one minute they're a recruitment coordinator, and they're yeah. an assistant, and an admin, I'm and they're currently supporting a few EAs. Where I've got candidates, EA candidate. Yeah, sorry, I can't speak today. I've got <laughs> candidates who are EAs um, that have touched on <clears throat> HR, general administration, office management. Um, and actually, they, if they were to step into an, an, a new role, they could step into any of those roles because they've touched on everything. But actually, a lot of clients say, well, we just, we just want someone with VA experience. Um, and it doesn't have to be that yeah. way, if that mm. makes sense. 
yeah it's kind of the it's kind of like the devil you know if you go well your job title matches what my job title is that i'm looking for so it should be an easy fit but really you go actually if, the, if you go what pain points what skills do i not have in the team or in the business and go right okay that's actually what i'm looking for yeah it might not be a that ea profile they might have the right skills but they might not you might even know what an ea really does no. do you know what i mean because if you I think something like this, but have you looked at this? There's one website I found called like nested.org.uk, right? And it's got this mental like chart. I showed Phil earlier. Like, so, <laughs> but even I looked at it, I thought, how does this make any sense? But what it does, it says, it goes like, okay, I'm looking for a software engineer and I need a developer. Then it literally reels off a load of skills that you need and the type of titles and a salary. And you can do it for developers. You can do it for like, medicine. You can do it for biotechnology. It's even got like, like biotech manufacturing chemistry gmp medical aseptic biology development these are the people these are the kind of titles you want and that's the salary you would pay mm. so i think if you were looking at it holistically mm. and going right i'm just got a load of funding you know i need to go and build a biotech i need to go and film a fintech company you can almost use this <clears> data <throat> in a way to go right i know i need to hire scientists developers finance people operators hr admin what skills do they all need and then mm. you could literally just kind of go on something like this and go it's all plotted for me all the data is there and I can just create it to go, right, well, EA needs to be X, Y, and Z. Scientist needs ABC. Developer needs to do C Sharp, Java, whatever. Mm. And then you've almost kind of got your barometer there because then it is really just a case of how much experience you've got and where you've worked and more than the softer side of things, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And it's, if I'm right in saying this as well, that the skills taxonomy isn't just like hard skills like that. It is also the soft skills and kind of people skills on there as well, right? I think so. Like, I haven't... By the looks of things, it kind of gives a lot more in terms of if you're going to hire specific skills or specific roles, I should say, sorry, these are the skills you've got. I can't see a plot where it's like communication mm. or teamwork yet, but maybe it's just some haven't had enough time to look through it. But it's interesting. I must admit, first of all, when Dev Rita gave us this one, I was like, oh my God. Mm. <laughs> I think it's quite a simple concept. Yeah. That... By just skills taxonomy, it sounds super complex and yeah. really complicated. But when you actually break it down, like you kind of said earlier, it, at its core, it is quite a simple thing to understand. It's like, well, by by function and then by role, there'll be certain skill sets that you'll need to have. So these are the, map out all the skill sets you need to have, and then find people that cover as many of those as possible. Yeah. So I think because I guess that kind of gap analysis comes into this. And I was about to say that I think that's exactly where this comes down to. Because from what I was reading, it's almost like it's important to know this because there is such a skills shortage. So all that's happening is that people are getting paid more to do more senior positions without the experience. Recruitment costs are kind of going up and they're looking for more consultants because there is that, that shortage. So how that intertwines into like skills-based kind of hiring is that's the bit I'm still a bit struggling with. It's like, okay, well, if we know there's a skills shortage, why, why is this important then? Mm. That's the bit I'm still not sure mm. about. Yeah. Because if you notice, like it's just identifying. <clears throat> yeah, there's a gap. And you go, okay, there's there's a gap. Like n- now, what what do we do? Because the gap's still there. But I suppose the idea would be like, well, then don't make the wrong hire. So if you know that you need to hire a scientist that's worked in an aseptic GMP lab setting, because that's the skills that you know you need to hire. You don't go and hire someone that's only done tableting or whatever it may be, because it's it's never mm. going to be the same skill, and it will just cost you more in the long run. Yeah, I guess that's kind of where it's coming in from. It's like not just hiring by strictly by job title and saying we've been told we need to hire. I know I've got a team of three. It needs to be five. I need to go and hire two scientists. Like, well, what do you need them? What do, what do you need from them that you don't have existing in the team? And I guess probably from existing employees as well, right? In terms of how can we kind of upskill and yeah. even retrain people to 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 meet those skill gaps that we have? Yeah, as well. It probably stops like cutting corners. Because mm. you think like, okay, we need to hire. So well, why? We're we any more people. We need to deliver. So what mm. skills is it you need? Though like, what's missing? Yeah, and I think that's the big kind of key to it. So I was reading some of this. Some of these stats are quite interesting. Um, Seventy-eight percent of UK business leaders find it challenging to find and attract top talent. So go figure. Like, that's I think that's obvious in this market. Mm-hmm. But then there's loads of redundancies kind of happening as well at the same time, isn't there? So there should be more people. But is it just because they've hired these individuals and they kind of looked around and going, don't actually know what you do. Mm. We're not hired for skill. We've basically hired because there was a surplus of work and we haven't really thought about the actual skill and what you're actually doing. Mm. Yeah. All the demand's not there. Yeah, indeed. 
I think the thing is with this though, is there's that internal piece as well, isn't there? So once you're in there, obviously if you've got got it all laid out very clearly, it gives the people like development opportunities internally as well. Yeah. Which hopefully will help your retention. Then you won't have to hire. Mm. But that's not always <laughs> not always as easy as it sounds, right? No, but no. that's a good point. Yeah. Because you can start looking at those skills gaps and then maybe looking around and go, who can do that then? Yeah. Who's got that skill? Who's got that experience? Yeah. It it kind of ties into what we spoke about on the Gen Z versus Millennials podcast. It's like Gen Z is like not just the flexibility, but the actual development plan and having yeah. something there. And you end up losing someone. You say, well, okay, let's say it's a junior job, you know, fairly low salary. But the, the cost it would, the cost in finding someone new, probably having to pay them more money than you were previously paying. If you did, like you said, just train them into a different area or say you have these we like you, you've got these skill sets, where can we best deploy you in other areas? Yeah. I get it's maybe more difficult if you've been, you know, like a head of compliance or you're you've got, you know, five, six, ten years experience already in that space. But if you're like one, two years, you've touched on one area, but you say, okay, you're good at this, this, this and this. This is your kind of skill matrix. Is that the right word? Yeah, or portfolio. Matrix, yeah. yeah. And kind of go, okay, where else can we best use you in the business? So we're not losing good people, they're staying, we're cutting costs down. And then it, the culture kind of grows from there as well. Cause yeah. You're keeping the right people. It's funny you say that though, because we've got some stats here where it says nearly nine out of ten um, L and D learning and development professionals agree that keeping track of skills data to proactively upskill and reskill current employees is essential. Yeah. Yet only twenty six percent of organisations actually challenge their employees to learn a new skill or to take a skills based approach. So it's, it's, yeah, it's just mm. funny you say that when actually there's such a divide. But that might be why it's important because maybe no one's connected it together. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, we know we need to hire. We know this is kind of what we need to look for. But no one's actually gone, no, if you're going to hire a developer, then X, Y, and Z is actually what you need. Mm -hmm. So then when you look at your staff, you can go like, what are you doing out of that X, Y, and Z? Oh, I'm doing front end and CSS, JavaScript. Okay, but you're not learning about data integrations and that kind of stuff. But that's something you need mm. to learn. And you think about it, even if you're coming through as a grad, because you get asked that question in school, what do you want to do when you're older? I don't know. Yeah. And then unless you're kind of one of those individuals who goes, I want to do this, I want to be a doctor or a science and IT guy, yeah. you're kind of in this weird part of going, well, I know I'm good at computers and I like talking to people, whatever. But if there's a matrix like this to go, hey, if you want to be a scientist, you need to know this, this, and this. You, need to do, you want to be in IT, you need to know that, that, and that. Mm. And then if people are hiring for that, you can almost identify it See, even if you're starting out or looking for a career change or you want to get better, mm. you can always go, okay, if you want to be better at being in sales, you then you just do this. Mm. And if you have that as a unified thing across the mm. board, it should actually help, again, with skills gaps if you've got upskilling that like we spoke about previously to kind of go, right, if you think you're a great recruiter, but you can do this, this and this, but you're just not very good at BD, for example then that's the bit that we need to focus on. But it may only ever be two or three things. It doesn't mm. have to be like a massive list, does it? No, no. And I think with like anything, you don't need to overcomplicate it either and kind of go too fine to, you know, fine tooth with it as well. Yeah. But yeah, I think definitely in terms of utilising people in the best way and looking at projects and going, well, okay, we, what do we, what's the outcome? What skills do we need to make this happen? And then kind of work backwards rather than kind of go, it's, the, it's a marketing project. So marketing has to do it. But then you can say, well, look, we need to rope other people into this that can help us get the best outcome and look at different angles and that kind of thing as well. Yeah, but you know what? I think then it, that's that's when you can look at gaps and go, that's a gap we could plug with mm. upskilling or a contractor or hire. Yeah. Because then, then you should be able to be a lot more specific within that remit mm. to kind of go, we know roughly speaking, like marketing, like you said, there is particular things but then it's like right like how much strategy or campaign management brand management market research do you do maybe it's, we just need to do way more market research yeah. so then it's just kind of go and dig there mm. yeah rather than just we're busy yeah we're busy hiring that marketing level. stuff yeah we're busy hire at that level because that's probably what we need yeah so and it probably get, it says here as well you know in terms of actually getting more accurate job descriptions like every job description has the same soft skills no matter the role uh what highly dynamic highly dynamic proficient in x you know in, in yeah. microsoft office personable yeah. personable easy to you know can communicate team, with team, player. Yeah. team player team player but can work on their own yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i need a lone wolf who i need a lone wolf who's been a captain like <laughs> it's you know it's the same i get it to a degree but it's 
it's just the same drill. You know, they copy and pasted that yeah. every yeah. single time. And it's a, you see it from the same like every, the same job description, same intro, same soft skills. But then when you look at the actual what what you need to do, it's like responsibilities. And then it's like, well, what experience are you looking for? And it's like someone that's done that. So it's just repeating itself. Whereas yeah. if you went, these are the skills that we need. And then you can do kind of, you know, go down the skill based assessment route and you could actually quantify just put numbers on it then, couldn't you? Mm. You know, just grade it. Almost like in school. Like in school. Mm-hmm. So, because you do get that a lot in IT, they'll kind of go, I'm proficient in energy and science, you get that, don't you? In terms yeah. of like mm. cell culture or Java or you know, whatever. And then a scale of one to 10, how good do you think you are? Six out of 10, 10 out of 10, whatever. And you could almost grade it that way rather than going, yeah, I've got X amount of years doing it. So I think they still a huge argument that just because you're doing something longer doesn't mean you're better at it. In yeah. fact, I think it has the reverse effect. The longer you do something the same way for too long, because you just don't see the angles. You're going, oh, well, this is the way I've always done it. Yeah. Mm. So and it must be the right way. must be the right way. Yeah. We yeah. saw that revolution recently in recent time with like SMEs, like that whole market we work in. They're, all of them are there just to kind of buck the trend. Yeah. Just to challenge the status quo. That was, that was it. Yeah. Wasn't it really? Yeah. Because we've always done it this way. We've always used the yeah. big farmer. We've always gone the to Revolut's, the bank. Yeah, yeah, the Revoluts are challenging the traditional banks, and now the new startups are coming through are challenging Revolut. Yeah. And then when they get big enough, someone else will challenge them to do it differently, and it's just a constant cycle of things getting more. Yeah, more change. More yeah, different. So. I thought I was going to go somewhere that, but I've completely, completely <laughs> I've literally on top of my tongue and it's completely gone. I, I was reading something on this around the, it must be quite a difficult time to start thinking for the future because if you have mm. like a lot of skills based gaps at the minute and everyone's moving towards AI, artificial intelligence, big data and using a lot of analytics, that's, that's coming. Mm. But we haven't got the people to kind of do it yet. They're not there yet. So how on earth do you plan and strategize Mm. it's really difficult yeah. to kind of get their own head so maybe this is another thing to look at and saying well what's actually beneficial in an organisation minute and what can we live without yeah. we've just seen it a little bit aren't we and I saw there's, there's these clusters of like the most demanding demanding skill sets so here's the, here's the list to give to you actually, we should have done bingo maybe, before I was going to say maybe give I'll, I'll give you like some ideas so there's 10 clusters right so basically just different areas of business that are most sought after at the minute and then there's a load that are down, down, you know, not as desirable. So we'll start with like the desirable ones. What do you reckon they kind of are? So IT. This, IT. So this is just skill sets, like, right? Yeah, so no matter what kind of company you are, like some sort of... If HR. You're state, HR. Data yeah. and data's got to be well up there. Yeah. Just you should, you should, general HQ personnel, yeah. like support staff. Yeah. I don't know how office to bracket that. No, yeah. office managers, EAs, Admin. everything you've just said. Basically. Yeah. 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 They're hard to find. Is it? Office administration number four. I was going to say finance has got finance management and accounting has got to be up there. Number seven. Number seven? Seven out of ten, yeah. Was data on there as well or no? Does uh, it just fall under IT, I guess? It kind of... There's, there's a bucket around automation, uh, a drive and automation and maintenance. What, do you, yeah. what number do you reckon that is out of ten? Four. Where did IT come? Th- software development three. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, NHS should have its own bracket, surely. I think it should have its own bracket, really. But actually, number one. <laughs> Social work oh, and right. caregiving. There you go. Really? That's the number one most wow. demanding oh. skill set. Oh. In the Do you know, and wow. one thing I would say, though, if you looked at reten- uh, retention rates and attrition rates, I guarantee you that social, social and care is, because they're always typically, well, tip not always, but they're typically on zero hour contracts yeah. that favour the employers and not low the employees rate. low hours low rates and it's a very mentally and physically stressful yeah role. that's got the b- both as well isn't yeah. it I think that that's the job you kind of go you're literally run off your feet physically yeah. and you have to be on point mentally yeah. 12 yeah. hours a day and emotionally and you have a yeah. brave yeah. So happy face on you 24-7 yeah 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 just I don't feel I could do that <laughs> no. just to get dicked over half we've, the time as well yeah, yeah. we've used carers with my you know, elderly grandparents, and I have to say they're absolutely brilliant. It's like they're my grandparents, and even I don't want to do what they have to do. It's it's mm. tough going. It's tough going. You think you just the amount of abuse you must get as well. So so that ties in quite nice when you think about it. So that is the most demanding. That is the most demanding skill set going at the moment. This is mainly at UK data. Mm-hmm. So it's almost thinking, okay, we know that's the the hardest kind of gap to fill. Mm-hmm. So what are the main skills we need to either upskill, recruit into, and, and have our non-negotiables ultimately? 
Yeah. That's number one. What do you reckon? Two, three, four. Let's go to top five then. I'll, I'll read them out anyway. But I've seen them now. So. So no, he's doing <laughs> it again. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee gate all over again. So it doesn't necessarily feel <clears throat> demanding, just genuinely the most like, demanding, yeah, demanding skills. Um, most in yeah. Mm. Sales is number two. Sales. Sales people. Yeah. Look at General us. General sales. <laughs> We go it's through it, don't we? Demanding people. <laughs> recruiters. Yeah. yeah, it's recruiters though. <laughs> nah, that's well yeah. down low. <laughs> yeah. Unranked. Unranked what? Non- yeah. Unseated. So this is where it goes. So social work and, and caregiving is number one. Mm-hmm. General sca- sales is number two. Software development number three. Office admin number four. Driving and automotive. Oh, automotive like as in like logistics. HGV. HGV like yeah. drivers, that Makes kind of stuff. Of Business management. Mm-hmm. Six, account and finance. I... Uh, Business analyst and IT number eight, accounting administration number nine, and retail ten. I would have thought retail would have been higher. I, yeah, I suppose maybe because of the move of going to like virtual Amazon, yeah. you know, those type mm. of things. Oh, Tori's got something more important. Right <laughs> Tori's mate's no, no. like, where are you? I can do it from We're in the pub. It's four o'clock, you I'm said. I'm slightly worried that no one's joined, though. So so that's I'm a good like, skill oh. set. I've made um, it's, it's like a, a priority. I I can, <laughs> How just to describe it. like a multitask. Yeah. Like, this is live in action. Juggle multiple responsibilities. She can actually juggle as well. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Work in action. Um, well, so, no one's joined, so I'm kind of worried. You've got two minutes left, haven't you? Yeah. got time. I wouldn't panic. Yeah. For full It'd content, so what are you doing? Starting an interview? Yeah, yeah. An interview. Retail yeah. must be an absolute nightmare to recruit into. I would have thought so. <coughs> absolute nightmare. That must be the, the churn and turnout and just trying to get reliable people who can actually smile at customers. It, it mm. must be it's so a tough hard. job as well. Yeah. So but again, you're probably on zero hour contract. Yeah. In some ways, though, it could be one of the easiest to recruit into. Because there are so many people out there that. Well, in terms want of your it. physical day to day job as a recruiter, it's probably very easy. But I would have thought actually getting them to stick must be oh, quite yeah. difficult. Like, in terms of re- maintaining the, re- the, the retention, work. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of, the, yeah, they're the, the, probably the uh, barrier to entry is, I'd guess, quite low. But then yeah. the actual retention rate and what you can do to keep people in, in work is probably quite difficult. It's quite tricky. Mm. Have you ever done retail work? Yes. I worked yeah. in a, a golf shop. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, of course you did. Talk us through that. Which is why I'm so good under pressure. <laughs> I'm smart. Can't play golf. Great customer service. Great looking. Service. Yeah. Good customer service. <laughs> Always clients. smiled on my face. Um, where did I work? I worked at a little golf club called The Bursted. Yeah. Uh, when I was 16. Is that legal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah fine. <laughs> Sorry, Bursted Golf Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just had your membership revoked. Sirens going down Biddeford High Street. Um, you named your manager as well. In the shop. <laughs> I used to take all the green fees, sell Mars bars when I weren't eating them, <laughs> Diet Cokes, um, golf apparel. Yeah. Golf clubs. In terms of food, they only sold Diet Cokes and Mars bars. Pretty much in a golf Probably shop. Living. Probably you don't yeah. play golf, do you? <laughs> Where's <Where's laughs> Drake? No, it was, um, I'll tell you what though, digressing, it, it very much um, probably made me the person I am because you get some angry people coming in there. You do. You yeah, get a lot of made you an angry person? Or? No, no, you just know how to deal with people. Mm. And you could literally, one minute, you got like a, a group of juniors having their first golf lessons, the next minute you got a load of like the seniors team coming in, then the ladies have co- come in and moan about the sandwiches and the bread's gone off or something and it's my fault but yeah and you have to kind of deal with all <laughs> these different up, walks yeah. of life and different people and you just just get used to it so nothing mm. phases me no was teachers on that list uh social work and caregiving no there wasn't actually no. there wasn't actually not education and the only other thing i was going to say is am i falling into retail was like the food and hospitality oh. industry as well not near at all mm. i guess this is just top 10 yeah but you would have thought that would still be up there in some capacity. yeah good yeah. To throw demand. a cat amongst the pigeons, are they the most in demand because there's also the largest workforce in terms of numbers as well? In terms um, of the percentage of the, the the percentage of the UK that are employed in those industries, I as th- in there's more retail workers than there are IT people. There. Most likely, I think this is kind of just the biggest demand mm. ultimately. So it's not necessarily saying. I suppose it is. It's most saying mm. the majority of the market want these things at the moment. So if you look at the whole economy and the whole workspace at the minute, these are the top kind of industries, are the top kind of skills that companies, generally speaking, public sector or private, look for. Mm. So yeah, but it's strange. Yeah. You would think yeah. like education. Just play devil's advocate, really. No, you're right. In, you're in the absence surprised. of bent, play devil's advocate. <clears throat> but it's strange. You're right. I was supposed mm. that education is kind of not on there unless it kind of. Yeah, it might fall into caregiving in a way. Potentially, but. Yeah, no, retail, that's the, that's the lowest one. Mm. Okay, so next part then is quite interesting, I found. So let's look at the highest annual median salaries. 
Stop looking. I'm actually not. I was looking at the um, <laughs> that <laughs> thing. The graphs. <laughs> yeah. So this, I'll have to. We'll have to put a link a bit at this point for this. So there's a there's a website called uh, dataviz.nesta.org.uk, um, and it actually goes through those bits, and it's got this whole matrix and the value of skills and how demanding it actually is, and then puts a price on it. So you literally okay. can hover over Hence it. It's the taxonomy. Kind of They've yeah. thought about this, haven't they? Never <laughs> thought about. It. So you can actually look at average salaries and then look at specific like roles and skill sets mm-hmm. and it'll give you like a median salary of what you can pay for IT, admin, science and research is on here, construction, mm-hmm. sales marketing, social care, etc. And it breaks it right down. Um and then it's got median numbers. So then it's kind of given us I don't think you guys you might get this, the highest annual median salary. So like what are like the most in demand roles? But what pays be- what pays the most, do okay. you think, at the minute, on average? So, so immediately kind of throw social care out of it, because I was thinking in terms of median pay, I reckon it's not. Yes, yeah, so not as the sector, but the actual jobs, yeah. so what pays the most, like average, what pays the most at the minute, do you think? Doctors. Doctors. IT. Yeah, IT. yeah software developers. It's all IT. Is right? it? Yeah. yeah. It's all Business IT. Software Can we, yeah, was it, yeah, it must be, what, six figures? or? So it's five, it's five on here. So five to one, right? It's number five. It's mainframe programming. Nice median one. As far as IT security standards, IT security operations, security trading, so actual traders, mm. is number two, and then data engineers. Mm. But this is something we were chatting about today, weren't we? Saying Can that, I look now? Yeah. <laughs> Can I look at you? <laughs> you can look at me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking over here because you keep having to go at me for. Um... <laughs> I was going to say you were kind of talking to him without looking yeah. anywhere near him. For our listeners, they can't see. I was quite rude. I was just staring on the other side of the um, the building. <laughs> Carry on, sir. <laughs> Data engineers. Mm. But we were talking about this, this literally this morning, weren't we? Mm. Just saying that there's going to be this huge shift to away from. I say away from loosely, but developing in terms of actual developers and even mm. like a scientific perspective, it's like. Why do we need to do so much manual kind of experiments when we can actually visualize and almost predict data and different outcomes and almost mm. use probability in terms of where the best kind of solutions are? Yeah. So that's why I think data is, is definitely up there because everyone, the more data you can do more. I think that's the whole like, yeah. idea nowadays, isn't it? Devereet is nodding, so that means yeah. that's a good thing. <laughs> even, saying the right things. even our candidates are they're always saying, oh, I'd like to get involved a bit more by informaticians yeah. or do a bit of coding and set up some databases. It's, like, it's not something you probably heard about five years ago. No. They just want no. to be on the bench doing the experiments. It's funny you say that in terms of like the times period as well, because it's quite difficult because almost in, in five years' time, the roles that we're recruiting for now would have changed quite significantly as well in terms of things like automation and with mm. AI coming through as well now. It's like, well, how do you train your staff for roles that don't even exist yet but will? probably exist in terms yeah. of like okay you're I'm, I, I'm even thinking in terms of like marketing you say okay when email email campaigns first came around and now you can automate email campaigns and now you can get ai to develop email campaigns for you yeah. so the role has changed you know significantly over that period of time it's like how do you almost plan ahead with your skills taxonomy i think that's that's kind of where this gets to mm-hmm. is going okay we're trying to automate and do more with artificial intelligence and data no one knows really what that actually looks like yet. Mm. So then it's kind of going back and going, well, what skills are we going to need for the future? Not knowing where that's going to be. Mm. And what's in most demand and what's the most growth? You've got to look at this website because it, it does, it's it's, a, it's quite hard to get your head around. But more I look at it, more it makes sense. It's even got like a whole graph. It talks about low growth, high salaries, high growth, high salaries. Recruitment's in here as well, which is quite interesting. Really? Yeah, but the, the, here's the crazy part. The high growth, high salary piece is data engineering. That's the most, followed by market research. That seems to be market analysis. I was seeing as Tableau, data mining, SaaS, that kind of stuff. And it's more like data analysis. That That's like the high growth, high salary kind of piece. So if you're looking for a job and you want something that's high growth, high demand, high salary, that's where you want to be. Mm. Opposed to, let's look at low growth, low salary, welding and mechanics. Really? Mm, yeah. Retail so, management, general general sales. Wow, low salary, low growth. So currently in high de- currently in high demand. So currently in high demand. Because you said number two was general sales, but it's also so it's, it's currently in high demand, but it's shrinking. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. If this one says low growth and low sales. So I'm guessing general sales typically is lower because you, it's all bonuses and commissions and those types of things. You, you see, I think this is kind yeah. of basic salaries ultimately. Yeah. Um. Whereas you've got 
high salaries and low growth, which is like procurement, securities trading. That's an interesting one. Mm. HR management's in there as well. So I guess it's areas that haven't got a lot of movement in terms of people changing jobs or looking for roles. Yeah. Which you'd imagine nine times out of ten, if people are already well rewarded and looked after in those areas, they wouldn't look elsewhere. Yeah. Maybe. It's interesting, isn't it? I think that's the, that's the thing we've got to think about. If you're looking to hire or upskill or whatever and you need more data people, it's like, fine, it's a high growth area, which means more people want it, but you're paying for it, ultimately. Mm. That's really what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. And if you want to kind of go cheap and cheerful, which people, there's going to be, I'm guessing them also, if it's low growth, is that, mm, does it mean there's a lot of them there or does it mean there's no one there? That doesn't Good really point. matter, does it? I don't know. It's or so it's stagnant. You're stagnant. And there's yeah. so much turnover, there's no growth, but there's lots of people in demand, but it's all replacement. Yeah. You're not actually growing, mm. which probably makes sense for like a sales position. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's just really quite out there. I like it though. It's just a lot to kind of get your head around. <clears> but this is, yeah, I'll just have a, just a wild thought that came into my head is like, does this not need to start from education? In a sense of go right, okay. What are the most in demand areas, and is that something that career coaches and employers should be going and talking to schools about, Definitely. or universities 100%. and saying these are the areas that are growing? So yeah. this is what you need to focus on. Definitely, because all you know, people say like follow your dreams, and that's absolutely fantastic. But also, follow it's your like dreams. If you, go, you need to find. You could have said that Yeah, you need to, yeah, you need to find. Yeah, like you need to be employed as well. So it's like okay, what's actually important. Um, what were your dreams, Ruby? Yeah. Well, no, what did I want to be? What, what did you, want, you to want to be? Originally a footballer. Right. And then I had my 13th birthday and I thought, I'm not going to be a footballer. <laughs> so I'll become a football agent. Right. Um, and then, so I did business and Spanish because Real Madrid and Barcelona were pretty big at the time. Um, I think they're still going quite strong. And I did recruitment, which is kind of a little bit like football. Agent. You're an agent. Yeah, I'm an agent of sorts. Yeah. Um, and I think, I've, I think I'm a million miles away. But did you know what you needed to be to be a football agent? Well, I just thought business and Spanish. Skills were there? Not really, no. 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 Do you know now? I wouldn't know. I think, it likes skills, I think that's yeah. quite who you know. Mm. Uh, negotiation. As I was going to say, negotiation has got to be right up there, isn't it? Yeah, languages. I think I was probably fairly on the point with languages. Um, so did you learn Spanish? You know I where this is going, don't you? Yeah, I turned up once. Yeah. <laughs> I like to you the actual story. I, I was, I Could was, you say I've, welcome to the podcast in Spanish? No. Nah. Hola. <laughs> I, I, if I'm being very honest, I fell asleep in my Spanish exam. <laughs> what? Because, and the reason why... Having a siesta. The reason... <laughs> 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 you it took its part of the exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, culturally. Kind of, yeah, I've heard the reason, what they do in Spain. So. The reason why is because I was going to go into the beginner level exam which is spoken to you in English and at the last minute I was then put into the higher exam which is spoken to you in Spanish and I, I thought it was a question and they were explaining the times and the rules of the exam and I had an English literature exam and I really struggled with English in school so I thought do you know what I'll just rest I'll use this as a rest period to make sure that I pass English rest yeah so I fell asleep and my teacher went how did it go and she went I was in the higher exam and she went ah Oh my god! So yeah, not my proud. <laughs> and that's why. I didn't, and so what did that, you tell your mum and dad? I'm oh, just uh, resting. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. resting my eyes. I've yeah. sacrificed my Spanish exam for my English exam. Why tell that? How did, you, how did, did you, you do on the English exam? I got to say, <laughs> oh, oh, nice. yeah, yeah, which wasn't too bad. Yeah. Do we oh, applaud that? Is that I good? Know. It was worth it. So it, it was, was, it was for worth the net. Seems like yeah. you turned up, isn't it? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Was it GCSE? So, it's a pass. Yeah, GCSEs. Yeah, it's a. It's acceptable. Yeah. 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 Unless you're Gen Z, which is numbers now. And who knows if you hadn't napped? Who knows what yeah. you would have gone well, You could be a football agent. Oh, good. Yeah, butterfly <laughs> effect. Yeah. Could have been the next George A. Mendes. <laughs> you just stand in on the, on the plane with Ronaldo flying off to Saudi Arabia. Doing all those deals. Yeah. yeah. Could have happened. I bet I you I'd rather be in a... I think I'd rather be in a Coffee Mornings episode, to be honest. Yeah, Fair with Definitely. <laughs> is, is he happy, though? Yeah. <laughs> is he happy, though? Yeah. Absolutely, Phil. I think you're right though. I think it definitely has to start. I say start. I think it can start with education in mm. terms of like, if you have a dream, 
maybe it's thinking about okay so what skills that you need not just to be like well work hard at all your exams but then there is logic there and i've never i didn't really ever understand that till after i left school mm. the only the idea of it really was just to kind of get you in the mode of doing your own research retain mm. information being able to like communicate yeah. it write it down show you kind of working out it took me a long time to figure out that's what they were doing yeah. mm. but i wish they would have just said that just very mm. straight and gone yeah. if you do this it you're it will set you up it's funny because like, you, you never get told that you do yeah. work experience at school as well don't you so i hate you, you know what nothing they do it anymore oh i'm not we, surprised I feel, I my younger brothers didn't do it did it did it in year 10 i believe and six form but it's like find some work experience you're right yeah. desperately scrambling around like who will take me on i have no idea what i want to do no idea where i want to go and then you do two weeks of it but you don't come away with and someone goes right this is exactly what you've learned this is what you've been doing no. you still come away like i've got no idea what still i've just done, done. Well, it's like the photocopy i have no idea I've how to say, I told, did i say it on this <laughs> podcast last week, before yeah. last no? episode What's that? So last, so we spoke about like work experience and stuff like that last week, and so I had like um, work experience with a printing company down where we used to work in the old office, and I swear to God, <coughs> they got me to photocopy a book, no. page by page. That was my work no. experience. So I was like, this is the worst thing in the world, and I thought if this is work, then no thanks, <laughs> not like, for me. This is not for me. And I oh, thought to myself, I didn't even think to myself at the time, why they asked me to print something off they can just read. Yeah didn't make any yeah. sense but you know what i did i've managed to figure out a way to kind of i'd almost go to get the machine and it had like 500 pages whatever it was and i would just put a copy to do 500 scans right so obviously scan one and i quickly did the next page did it there and then so i was literally doing like four pages really quickly but that's i don't know i don't know what that fucking taught speed, me speed efficiency process, like, process improvement <laughs> didn't you do work yeah. experience with your dad my dad yeah um, didn't he like? Didn't he have a printing business? No, he did. No, he's, he's, he's like paper. <laughs> that, boss, that boss that you didn't want to name. No, is that, that why? Yeah. <laughs> like, so go remember. and print this book out. For I you, don't buddy. know what kind of company it was now. Thinking about it, I don't know if there was still in existence. But it wasn't. But that used to like make well, it's to sell paper basically. But no, I think I used to go to his office, and I remember going to his office and going, "All you do is sit on the phone talking to people all day long. That's all you do, mm. and he gets paid for it." Mm. And I think that was kind of like, "Yeah, that sounds pretty good." They just mm. talk to people, don't get paid. That was kind of like, but no one ever said like, you know, like you say, this is what you've kind of learned yeah. from this experience, and you've actually got these skills. No one tells you how continue. it's valuable or where you can take mm. it from yeah. there. It's just like do it because you need to. You do it, and then it's like right. Well, then they're like, so what university are you going to? What what are you going to study? What do you want to be when you're older? And you're like, I, I don't have know. no idea. I knew I wanted to do business. No I knew that much. Or even when I was really young, so I used to sell like. Nintendo 64 games and Paolo Pal- Pal- Raffling Oh, you were one of shirts. them. Mm. Selling your sweets in the going. playground and stuff I never like did that. sweets. I used to literally got to ben a point. Ben had that market cornered off, though, didn't they? <laughs> ben used to do sweets. My little sister did pens. But I did... It's family of just salespeople. Yeah, no, it's terrible, business. isn't it? So I did Nintendo 64 games. I used to buy from like um, a boot sale and that kind of stuff or on eBay. And I used to buy like the actual job lots kind of stuff. Um, and then there was always these rare games you could just sell for more. So I used to break it down and sell it on eBay or friends or whatever. And then I took that money and bought a load of potent, dodgy Polo Ralph Ren tops. And then you sold them? Yeah. <laughs> so you used to do like, I don't know, I think it was like two, like 15 quid each or three for 30. I think that's exactly what I used to do. And I rang my dad's and he had like an office in Bitterricke and he had like yeah. 30, 40 staff. And I'd literally just take the box at lunchtime and go, who wants Ralph Ren tops? And people used to just buy that's them. That's amazing. So I took that money and spent a lot of it on beer i think at that time but then i found that there was a whole market around sim cards so at that time there was like genie sim cards remember that yeah, yeah. wow so that was like before o2 and he was probably a customer <laughs> probably still a customer yeah. you did your 10 pound <laughs> the first review yeah <laughs> so you, the, the deal was is you could get these free sim cards can you mm. remember that yeah but you used to have to top, have to top up a tenner every month and that would give you i think it was a 300 text messages yeah. was it unlimited something like that something like that but for some strange reason i think they stopped doing them but i could still get them so i was ordering the all these sim cards and you could only order six so i thought okay i'll order three at my mum's address to my dad's address for arm and then da, 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 da. and i kept doing it kept doing it flogging them all and then i thought well i'll just sell them on ebay as a bulk thing and then this guy from like germany or something ages ago i remember he messaged me and he said can we talk on MSN messenger okay are you like red flag yeah no, it was just a little bit <laughs> yes we can, can you send me some? <laughs> no and he said oh i'll buy like i don't know like 100 sim cards a week off you can you do it and i was like yeah of course i can i literally just thought just say yes i'm breaking bad isn't it? <laughs> with sim cards 
So I did that and I, I was just flogging these things past this guy. And I was 17 years old. But I think as a skill, if you want to kind of think about it, that's the one I knew was just very much buy some shit and sell it. You were a natural, you had good business acumen yeah, from a young age. Yeah, from like you a salesy. Because I, I had no idea what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. I, I really think mm -hmm. about it, I didn't think I ever wanted to do recruitment. Yeah. I knew whatever it is I was going to do, I was going to be good at it. But I never thought about it and gone, oh yeah, it's definitely going to be recruitment and I'm going to really enjoy yeah. doing this. Yeah. I, I reckon, real fake data, I reckon 70% of... 70% of people just fell into what they do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I, very few people, I reckon, said when they before they left school, said, this is what I'm going to do, and then actually went out and did it. Yeah. In terms of, like, I want to work in HR, or I know I want to work in finance. Mm. And it probably comes down to those conversations of, what am I good at? That's what I'll go and do. Yeah. Which is kind of the same thing that we, exactly what this taxonomy is. It's like, well, yeah, what are you good like, at? And then good follow at numbers, that. If you take it like from a very junior level, it doesn't have to be like good at negotiations yeah. that and the other, but if you can talk, if you you're kind of confident. get an idea, you're confident, yeah. they're, they're your skills you can look at. Equally, if you're good with numbers yeah. or you speak different languages or whatever, mm. and then you can almost plug that in. So that's mm. where the gap can start, can't mm. it? And saying, right, well, from, a, from like a junior level, we need these specific skills. And if you promote that a bit better and schools teach it, companies mm. promote it and go, look, if you want to get into like a sales role, marketing role, ops role, whatever, Mm. these are the actual skills you need so then you can work into it so mm. then it works at junior level or even if you're thinking about changing or looking to enhance it mm. surely it would make life a lot easier mm. could even be the replacement for cv you could have actually been a I'll football just... agent if this was around <sighs> 10 years ago Gutted. i can't believe it was only 10 years ago that's ridiculous it's not even that is it how do you know 13 yeah well it was 16 when you leave school so yeah about seven eight years ago seven eight years ago that's looks so about weird. 28 years ago that I left school. <laughs> People think I did O-levels. <laughs> <laughs> On parchment. <laughs> yeah, we had tablets and a chisel. Yeah. <laughs> a nice abacus. Yeah. <laughs> Went to school with Pete and Ray. <laughs> so we left school what, like... Do you know what? Someone asked me the other day. I can't remember. I remember 16, the 16. millennium turned. Is that the right phrase? 2000. 2000. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I was about 16. I did six form, just about. Yeah. So it would have been about 2002. 2002. Mm. That's a long time ago. I would have been yeah. three. Three? Mm. Wow. Well, it depends. If it was September, I might have been four. <laughs> when it was a leap year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I, yeah, because when I was at school, I walked, we had a careers advisor come in like, yeah. for a day. It's, and everyone's it's mental, like, I want it? this, I want that, I want to be like a doctor. And I was like, yeah. I want to be a golf pro. And she looked at me as like, oh, I don't know, you, why are you talking to me then? <laughs> so I don't know, you made me, I don't know. And then she it's, literally just like, we didn't have internet, we didn't have, like, you couldn't just go on a computer and go, oh, how to be a golf pro. I was like, I want to go to America, I'll get sponsored, go to university. And she's like, you, I, I can't help you. Like, <laughs> I was like, cool, thanks. At least she was honest though. I can't help you. But yeah. it's true, isn't it? Like, you, you, you go to school with one objective of going on to, well, going on to college or university to then get a career. And you speak to a career advisor, career coach for one day in the five years that you're there. Yeah. Mm. That's so true, actually. And I think it's like a 10 minute chat. What do you want to do? Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> My fo football agent. You fell asleep. Yeah, football agent. I, that was, this was before. Oh. I think he went, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Spanish. Yeah. Spanish, <laughs> Spanish and business. Yeah, yeah like, I mean. You could have been a Spanish waiter. You could have been a Spanish yeah. waiter. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I might have met a couple of footballers out there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that was a waste of time, that was. But... <laughs> what? No, not you. My so I'm still thinking about that. My story. Lovely lady. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your story is a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I don't teach you how to do interviews when I was there. No, no. still school. don't do that. Don't do you, you, don't, you leave school without having made a CV. Yeah. Do they even help you write a CV? No. I guess no. not. They don't give you no. any kind of... Even at, even at college, they didn't help. So when did you no. leave school then? Five years ago? Um, as we just spoke about about a minute ago. <laughs> eight years ago. Eight years. Yeah, school, secondary right. school. You went to college, then, though, didn't you? Yeah. I, meant, I, meant like, I did a degree in a BTEC diploma in sports science. Yeah, but science, like your last education yeah. was five, six years ago? Yeah. Yeah, fine. And they're still not teaching you how to do... Here's how you do an interview. Here's a role play. Here's like the sort of no. things you need to... Yeah, it's really bad, isn't it? No. It would be good to see more of that because if that's the kind of like gearing people up for work, uh, do you know what? I think there there is a gap there already, mm. and I think you definitely do see it with more younger generation of people. That it's like the expectation of what like 
work is like compared to what school's like is so different. Mm. Mm. You actually have to get up. You actually yeah. have to give a shit. You actually have to do it. And you have you to do things to you don't up. want to do. You have to turn up. You know, you've actually got to stay awake for the whole day. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's very different. I think, yeah, I'm, it's kind of digressing now, but I think the fact that you, you leave school without knowing how to write a CV, mm. how tax works, Oh, that's opening up. How a mortgage thing, works, like that, that should be interview, a whole other thing yeah. in itself. How, yeah. I, I how to some, interview? Yeah, I saw something around why they don't teach that, and why they don't teach people about money and tax and all this kind of stuff. It's quite controversial, but I think a lot of it is mainly down to kind of control. And let's face it, if you knew what you really needed to know, you probably wouldn't spend your money on the shit you spend your money on. Mm. No, yeah. capitalism. I don't know. That actually, is I was minus. Sixteen, <laughs> sixteen, I think. Maybe a little bit different, but at least you know. That's what I mean. But at 16, everyone knew, just, like, Eddie was selling an eight for a tenner or whatever it was. Like, you know, they had it. Yeah. It's not the right thing to sell drugs, obviously. But, like, the idea behind it is that it was all this kind of like temptation all the time from a very young age. Mm. Go to the sweet shop and buy all this. and That's what mm. you spend your pocket money on. But why didn't they say, if you're giving a five of pocket money, it's probably too much in our day. But, like, mm. you should save two quid of it and spend a pound yeah. on that. And then they don't teach you that stuff, do they? No. No. Why? Because no money's no good to a country if you sit in a bank account. Yeah. There you go. So maybe that's a podcast for next week. Yeah, it's quite a political one, but it's true. Like mm. they just think you, you think that their, their skills are that then become at that point. It's like mm. if you learn those types of things, they're they're really invaluable life skills. Mm. Mm. But when you get into the workplace, if you have like a better sense of direction I suppose in this sense what we're talking about isn't it you mm. would do these skills shortage wouldn't happen as much no. I think COVID has a lot to answer for because you know this role yeah. we're talking about the HR role yeah. in Oxford there's just no HR, decent HR people no. and the people that there are don't want to be in the office no. <clears throat> they've had money excuse me <clears throat> they've had money thrown at them from other companies so salaries are really really high now people want to work I mean I don't know how that kind of relates to COVID but the, the working from home People just don't want to be in the office anymore. Yeah. I think mm. it's because they haven't identified what skills that they need, not specifically in this and its situation, mm. but like maybe it's people coming through not realise that the skills they've got would be good for HR. Yeah. I think that's kind of yeah. it. And also, I think we tend to go down this road of they have to have this profile and this like idea yeah. of a scientist, yeah. HR salesperson, and you kind of forget that actually what skills they need to do this job in terms of organisation, communication whatever mm. and it's like okay so how does that translate to people that don't work in the industry then yeah yeah mm-hmm. or in that kind of sector and the uh, reason why i think it links to covid is because i reckon through this whole past three years people weren't upskilled they weren't trained yeah they were just delivering it was just survival yeah. wasn't it really if people, you had yeah. a job you were lucky yeah. and it was like you just you just keep your head down and keep going yeah i would wonder True. what stats would actually be like to say how many people felt they were actually trained and developed during COVID. I mean, you've got some hard learns, mm. that's for sure. Mm. Yeah. I wonder how much actual progression people got or was it just pure pressure? Mm. Just keep above the water. Just keep going. Mm. Just deliver, deliver, deliver. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's knows. kind of stuck around as well, isn't it? People are quite comfortable where they're at now. And like you said, when someone's been doing something for a long enough amount of time, you think, well, why do I need to change? Why yeah. do I need to... But we suffer with it, with don't that. we? You think mm. about trying to hire recruiters, mm. trying to find decent recruiters is so hard. Mm. Mm. And it's even trying to identify the skills in people that mm. are good to do this job is really difficult. Because like, a lot of it's about personality, isn't it? Yeah. As well as the skills. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of attributes that are hard. There's a lot of attributes that are hard. There was like an internal measure. thought that just come out. Then I was just like kind of thinking about what you were saying. Sorry, it's true though, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. And it's how you it's quantify the because for one thing that is like, oh, they need to have done this thing or yeah. have this skill. It's like, well, how do you then quantify their level of that? Yeah, it's always been done where they've done it for five years. It's like, well, you've done this, how much? Mm. And it's kind of okay, like you said, almost like a a grading system for the skills that you've got as well. Yeah. And kind of being honest with it and saying, look, I'm not good at this, 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 and this. I'm really good at this, 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 and this. Yeah. I think you have to. If you've got a real shortage in terms of you can't find that unicorn candidate or whatever it is, you've got to just look at, okay, what skills do I need then? So what do I actually need yeah. in this job that, that will help me find, identify the right individual? They might not be what I was after, but they've got this right skill mm-hmm. that I can build on. Or 
is it that they've got these like two or three skills that I really need and they haven't got the third one so that's where I'm going to help you mm. develop mm. yeah if you've got the time to hire them you've got the time to develop them do you yeah, know what the funny thing is about that though that, that's that's true isn't it that should be exactly should the way it should be goes. true but it, mm. oh, it's very hard it's rare you see it happen isn't it no very rare you know yeah. a lot of people will ask oh, what's the progression of opportunity and if I get the job like how am I going to be supported and it's always the same sort of context it's like yeah we've got this great like support system and da-da-da. and you start day one it's like oh we'll, we'll get to that and yeah. you just kind of sink or swim mm. that happens a lot as well doesn't it yeah or, or they say oh we specifically need this system this you know, you know it's really niche system we're three months down the line but that's because they you don't still, want to train it though yeah but it's like well actually if you just took someone on that's got all of the other skills that you need mm. you can train them in that area and then three months ago you would have had someone up and running there yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's funny one isn't it mm. Sure. So, yeah. But so there's a couple of things that um, DeVries kind of put down in terms of like step by step and how you can actually put this together, which I think is quite interesting. So, I mean, it does genuinely start thinking about the skills that you need rather than the actual person. I suppose that kind of mm-hmm. makes sense, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So, actually, looking at what the actual competencies are, what skills are for each role that you're recruiting into group those skills together and that gives you your kind of cluster of things because it could be there's lots of different skills skills different types of roles it might be just in it or science or it may be and then you kind of got at least a picture of exactly what skills you need in that group mm-hmm. it says creating a skills framework which i think makes good sense and you can always do this like a matrix style to kind of go yeah. we've got ops finance it science sales whatever and then you can bucket it and go there are the skills i need in each one of those categories mm. And where they cross over as well. Because there will be a lot of crossover. And then you can look at, particularly if you've already got a company, where the gaps are. Mm. Like what are the gaps in each individual thing? And what's like a like a general consensus across the board? Where are we kind of lacking in terms of skill? And then there's your gap. So you can start plugging it with other things ultimately. And, and yeah, it's interesting. It keeps talking about the same sort of thing here. Around so you can recruit into it. You can train up skill in it. You can refine it to make sure these skills are really what we need for the future. Um, so it kind of has a bit more longevity to in, into it and it does talk about a lot about technology here around like software and tools and I suppose even like gamifications and things like that you could really start mm-hmm. looking at to ensure that you're I suppose encouraging people to learn stuff but also maybe even from like a KPI perspective as well in terms of making sure that you're actually living up to what you should be doing mm-hmm. The only I find it really difficult with systems though, because it's almost like you need a login and a subscription for bloody everything. Yeah. Like, right, that's the only thing. That's, I'd, lo- I'd love to see a system where it kind of goes, we have like an end to end. You've got a company like this, we can give you this system, mm. it does everything <coughs> for you. If that exists. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Really would. Uh, so yeah, I think <laughs> it's a tough one because I don't think anyone's was really cracked it, but this is definitely the start of it. Is thinking mm. about the skills and the gaps and stop thinking about it as people so to speak but you can use the person to kind of go look you've got these skills which is great this is where your development points are because that's what demands in this market in this role in this segment Mm. yeah and it's constantly evolving and changing as well it's not just a one-time task yeah it's constantly kind of looking at it and going right okay where are we where are we focusing where are we dropping off how can we upskill, train? Where do we need to get external hires? Yeah. The only thing I was, I was thinking about it with is it talks about like what's the future of it. It almost makes it sound more systematic. Do you know what I mean? So it's almost like if you they're trying to create humans into like these specific little boxes. Mm. And that's the only thing that I kind of think mm, one or two ways with. Because just because you've got the skill doesn't mean you want to, you can do it. We find these very like high proficient people got super skilled, super intelligent, and just don't want to do it. Mm. Yeah, definitely. That happens a lot. Yeah, because the, the, yeah, I think the, the want is a a whole other thing in itself. Mm. It's all in a good saying. Well, these are the skills, but if someone just isn't passionate about the project, doesn't want to mm. be a part of it. I think that's where values come in at that point. Yeah, and then but then that kind of probably ties into the culture as well. If if you've got people that are just refusing to yeah. work on certain projects are they right for the business is yeah. it is it right for them there you go that is it there you go there you go <laughs> <laughs> there you go skill taxonomy yeah no i'd like to see how this one kind of unfolds but i don't know 
I think we can only really just think about what, what the gaps are today and train into it. And where the automation and everything kind of goes is way beyond my kind of thought process right now. Mm. You can't uh, <laughs> you can't think of what's not already been thought of. Is that right? Unless you use ChatGPT, maybe. But then that's only coming from data that's already been there as well. <coughs> Who knows? Mm. I have nothing more to say on the matter. Phil, what's your final parting words? Um, skill taxonomy. Do it. That's <laughs> <laughs> all? Oh, God. Oh. I can't follow that. <laughs> well, really? Really? Yeah, yeah, you can say anything. <laughs> he, oh, he put it so concisely, it was perfect. Do it. Yeah, just do it. Just do, just it. do it. Robin? Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. <laughs> all right. That's a wrap then, guys. Thanks very much. Um, what's our next one we're doing? Ways HR and leaders can make the most metaverse. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. This is going to be quite interesting. I should probably set that one out. Yeah. No, not got a headset? No? I don't. No? <laughs> no. Personal use only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I think we're going to try and. Um, <clears throat> it's super innovative, that one. Mm. I think it's not really something that's actually happened. It's more like what could happen. Mm. Yeah. How you can use it. It's going to get deep. Mm. Deep tech. Deep tech. Yeah. All right. Until next time, that's what we Featuring we're Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, yeah. Maybe Junior. might be busy. He's, he's just another guy called Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, Martin Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Zuckerberg. <laughs> nice one. All right, guys. Thank thanks you for having much. me. Thank you. Oh, thanks very much for Phil and Toy for our first kind of like... Oh, thanks. Four-way second. podcast. No? Second. Four-way podcast. Oh, right? four-way. Yeah. Tory second. Yeah, well. thank you for having me. It's been very interesting. And thanks mm. for paying attention the whole way through. <laughs> I'm not falling asleep. I have a job to do, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again. Thank you.